everybody to another edition of Pure Picks. I'm your host, James, and we're here to break down a few fights from UFC Paris, Moicano versus Saint Denis. Gerard already went over the recap for how we did a couple weeks ago, so I won't go over that, but I will just get straight into the picks that I think will be a gigalock for this week. Once again, gigalock for me is going to be anything plus odds, so whether that be a parlay, prop, straight pick, Anything that has plus odds, that's the kind of value that I want to provide for whatever fight card I'm doing. So for this week, for UFC Paris, I wanted to go down the path of a parlay because I saw a few locks that I really liked. So let's get into one of the first locks that I see. Um, It's going to be first leg of this parlay. It's going to be none other than... Taylor Lapulus. Now he's going to fight against Vince Morales. This is going to be a somewhat of a short notice fight for both men, actually. And uh, before we get into that, actually, let's look at the odds for this. So Taylor Lapulus right now, he's a minus 365, opened up at a minus 300 on Bet Online, as you guys can see here. Few reasons why I think he's a lock and uh, why I would like to have him as a parlay piece. Uh, first off, this is going to be a short notice fight for both men. Um, I think that Taylor, he's shown throughout his career that I th- he's just a, a professional. This guy has came in first in the UFC. I think he went two and one, came back, and he also has a two and one record. So he has a high winning percentage. I think that this fight is more often than not is going to go to decision. Um, and in a decision type of fight, I mean, you guys can just see here, I mean, Taylor Lapolis, he wins most of his fights by decision. Um, Vince Morales, this is going to be his second, second stint in the UFC. I think he went like three and five or something like that uh, in his first stint. He's obviously going to be hungry to make a statement, prove that he belongs in the UFC. I think that's going to play right into the hands of a guy like Taylor Lapolis, who's a professional. I think he's just going to move around, snipe Morales from range, even when they get into clinch situations or if Morales, for you know some reason, decides to grapple, which I don't think he will. I think he might try, but I don't think he has the ability to take down Taylor Lapolis. I mean, Taylor Lapolis, only guy he's been taken down by so far in the UFC and controlled is, uh, I think, in his first in the UFC, Eric Garcia. He ended up actually, I think, losing that fight, I believe. And he got controlled by Fareed Basharat as well. So I don't see Vince Morales as a grappler who can do that. I mean, if you guys just look at the stats from his UFC stints, this guy averages 0.14 takedowns a fight. 25% takedown accuracy. He has been showing an improved grappling game outside the UFC after he got cut, but I don't think that's going to be enough to beat a guy like Taylor Lapolis. This guy has a 78% takedown defense. He's shown that he has great takedown defense, great defensive grappling. It took Fareed Basharat 16 takedown attempts, just being ferocious landing five of them. I think he controlled, obviously, Lapulus for a majority of that fight, but Morales is not Furry Basharat, uh, so I, I don't think that's going to happen. So if that's the case, I think it's going to be a mainly stand-up battle. I think Morales is just going to be too aggressive early on, trying to make a statement, trying to perhaps finish the fight, and I think he's going to play into a lot of counters that Taylor Lapulus is going to have on him. So I think Terry Lapolis, he has Morales covered in a lot of areas in this fight. And I see him winning via decision, but I wouldn't rule out a KO even. I think this might be a, a time where Lapolis can pull off a KO uh, just because of that. I think the aggression and the just the recklessness that Morales might throw in, the, in this fight coming back into the UFC trying to prove a point. So give me Taylor Lapolis here as the first leg of our parlay. Let's move on to the second leg. So the second leg is going to be my most confident pick of the card. Um, obviously, he's going to be really high uh, odds as well. Uh, going with uh, Dun Wu Jung. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going with Umar Sai. Um, let's look at the odds here. 
minus 600 opened up at a minus 500. Um, yeah, I, you know, I've actually, I was actually a fan of Dong Wu Jung in the past. Uh, I, I thought this guy was going to beat Dustin Jacoby. That's, that's how much I believed in him because he, he has some good tape in the UFC. You know, he's been fighting decent competition, has some wins in there. Uh, but lately he's been on a, just a horrible slide. I think a three fight losing streak. One of those fights that he lost was to Devin Clark, which is uh, just just a horrible sign, especially for this fight. I, in my opinion, I think that Umar Sai, if you watch his fights and how this guy, how this guy rolls, I mean, he's legit. I, I think he has skills everywhere. I think he's the next top prospect in the light heavyweight division, and I think that Dong Wu Jung is the perfect kind of guy that is a stepping stone for him because. You know, Jung does have some good wins. Uh, he has some good tape out there in the UFC, but I I see Jung just being taken down and getting sub. Uh, I think pretty quickly, probably round one. But I, I mean, it, he could survive till round two. But I I just don't see the the physicality that uh Dung Woo Jung has for Omar Sai. I mean, Omar Sai I think has the just the athleticism of a like the quickness, speed of a light heavyweight, middleweight, but he has the power of like a heavyweight even. Like this guy's really strong. I think he's just going to take him down, ragdoll him, just finish him by submission, and that'll be all she wrote. Um, if the takedowns don't work, uh, because, you know, Dung Jung does has shown some decent grappling himself. If for some reason that doesn't work, I feel like say, a side just has some really underrated striking that he obviously hasn't shown yet in the UFC, but if he needs to have that in his back pocket, he'll have that covered as well. Also, when you're looking at these type of prospects, you know, 10 and 0, uh, you know, that where the undefeated trap, right? There's a lot of times where these undefeated prospects come in and they lose. Um, but I I watched back his fights where he even went to decision I feel like he has everything covered. Like he has a good IQ, good a good head on the shoulders. I think he's gonna be able to take the moment and seize the moment and win in front of the home crowd. So give me Omar Sai here via sub. I think round one or two. Um I wouldn't be surprised either way. So that's the second leg of the parlay. Third leg of the parlay to wrap it up to really finish the night strong. We're going to have none other than another Frenchman. It's going to be Benoit Saint-Denis. Now, I respect Moicano. Let's just give, I mean, he does great stuff for the MMA community. He has a great channel. Um, great stuff. I mean, let's look at the odds first. Um, Benoit Saint-Denis, minus 275, opened up at a minus 300. You know, I, I think that this, the line... It may be a bit wide, just given how this fight could go down and the skills of Moicano. I, I mean, I, I, I do highly respect Moicano. I think he's legit. Um, I just think there's a major physicality gap in this fight. Um, Benoit Saint-Denis is going to be coming out for blood right away. And I don't know if Moicano is going to be physical enough to withstand the barrage that he, he's going to encounter with a Benoit Saint-Denis. Um, you know, he, Benoit Saint-Denis, I truly believe that he was going to beat Dustin Poirier. I was on the BSD side. It was just a unfortunate case of staff infection. I mean, this dude has staff infection on his forehead. Uh, that's not good. It was really fresh, a fresh one too. So he most likely got it really like late into the fight week and he was recovering with antibiotics, you know, maybe that's a really bad excuse, but I really think that happened. You saw the gas tank be really affected by that. And he couldn't sustain that pace after a round one where he just ragdolled Dustin Poirier. So if we're assuming that he's not going to come in with staff extra, right. And obviously we're going to track this throughout the week, make sure that, you know, everything is good. Um, if that is the case, both men are healthy. I just don't see how Moicano is going to withstand this pressure and, and pace and physicality, really, that 
BSD is going to have for him. I mean, BSD is the definition of a marauder. He's going to come in there with reckless abandonment. And I think that the one thing that BSD might, that would stop BSD in his tracks is if someone had like a stopping power, like a Dustin Poirier, right? Um, unfortunately, Renato Moicano, he's not like a knockout artist. I mean, he he does. He's not going to have enough power to damage or hurt BSD uh, coming at him. And you know, I think he, I think in the grappling, he's going to definitely hold his own. Uh, I think that he's going to be able to probably play guard a little bit, maybe scramble a bit. But eventually, I think the physicality component is just going to overwhelm Moicano at some point in the fight. I would say probably around like round two or three. If I had to guess, um, but there's no way he's going to be able to survive five rounds of BSD. I mean, uh, BSD, people also forget this. This guy is also a dog. I mean, he took a, a thorough beating uh, against Zaleski Dos Santos at 170, 170 pounds. Many fighters would have just quit uh, with the beating that he took against a juiced up Zaleski and... I mean, BSD just stayed in there, uh, showed how much of a dog he is. Uh, so that's the type of people that I would like to have behind my units, at least someone who doesn't quit. And yeah, just with the no stopping power from Moicano, I don't think there's going to be a danger in the standup like there was against DP. I think that the grappling, I, I just don't see how he's going to just catch BSD. Uh, it, it'll probably be, have to be some kind of Hail Mary submission from the bottom, and that that rarely happens at a high-level fight like this. So give me BSD. Once again, respect Moicano. I think he's a great presence for the MMA community, uh, but I, I think BSD is coming in for blood, and I, I think he's going to finish Moicano within three. So... That is the three-leg parlay. Now, if you parlay all three of these guys at their odds that I stated, we're looking at BSD minus 275, Teo Lapalus minus 365, Omar Sai minus 600. Put one unit on that, you get back plus 103. So it's a plus odds. Made the criteria right there. And that's going to be my giga lock of the week. Best of luck, everybody. I hope everybody, you know, does well for this fight card. I think it's going to be a really entertaining fight card, actually. And um, I'm going to be very excited for this. It's going to be uh, in the morning or afternoon, depending on where you are in the, you know, in the in the States. But yeah, overall, just best of luck. Everybody check out peerpicks.gg or WAP payments. I mean, those are the places where you can sign up for our premium membership. Once again, only $20 a month. I think it's still one of the best values in the space. If you guys saw Gerard's recap, we're still really positive for the year. And we're going to continue to go into the next year with more momentum than possible. So I'm really excited to wrap this up. Once again, best of luck, guys. Beer pickers, we're out. Kiwi wish! <laughs>